create with Fran Sydney. Hello everyone, welcome to the show. It's Fran Sydney here with Create with France. And today we have a very special guest with us. It's called Shanna Rosenthal. It's a British citizen in Florida and also an American citizen. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much, friends. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you and see that you are dressed with such nice light summery clothes and reminds me that it's supposed to be spring. You know, it can be quite depressing and make you really anxious about when, when, when is summer coming here? <laughs> it's an eternal question for British people, you know, uh, but um, uh-huh. even if you're not British. And, um, and here's the thing, you know, we, we can worry about all sorts of stuff in life, you, we can do that. And today we're going to talk about a very particular worry, some kind of general anxiety that a lot of people, especially women, have. And remember that statistically women are two to three times more likely to have anxiety compared to men, and especially in menopause because it is driven by the lack of estrogen. So it's all medical-based data. Um, so uh, let's talk about a person that is living a good life, fulfilled life, everything is good. However, they are quite ahead in their you know, relationships and family and, and their job. And then maybe they have to do a presentation, talk in front of people and they feel the need to breathe deeply because they can't do it or they might even drink something. I know of a person that does that before doing her very, very famous course with people and she drinks during the course because otherwise she can't do it. And so this, this drinking is to soothe in something, but just, oh, just a little drink to feel better. So I feel that I can do this. Or maybe you could be um, not advancing. Maybe you are listening to this and you're not advancing your career because there's something there blocking you and you're just as good as Johnny and Mary, but you're not advancing, you think. Hmm. Or maybe you are good and you're advancing by just overthinking. You might be spending the, the night with chronic insomnia, like, oh, Why am I asking these questions to myself all the time? So if you are in this group of thinking, well, maybe I'm not good enough, or maybe this, maybe that, and you think so much you can't sleep, or by the time you get to the task, you are just blocked by something, and you've been pushing aside the idea that maybe there is something to do about it, this is why we got here a graduate in psychology who also uses EFT and NLP, to tackle this Mm -hmm. by rewriting the neuropathology or neuropathways that are behind these behaviors and these symptoms. So I really am happy to welcome you because the symptoms are so prevalent in many of your clients, right? Right. Is there any any more? Does that cover all of them pretty much? Well, yeah, I mean, you did a really good job. And, you know, I having worked with um, anxiety clients for going on 15 years now, you know, I've noticed that people tend to do things to distract themselves away from feeling the anxiety. And because it's so uncomfortable, right? We don't, we, we feel the anxiety both physically and emotionally. And so the 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 mind wants to keep us safe wants to keep us comfortable and so it creates these patterns of well, what can i do to feel more comfortable in this situation and oh i, I I'll, I'll just have a glass of wine like like you like you detailed and you know the the chemicals in the brain change a little bit we relax we soften the mind thinks oh this this feels good maybe i'll have another glass of wine just to keep it going and so now we're in an altered state of mind we feel more comfortable but now what happens is the brain kind of creates a a a pattern a behavior a longing for next time I feel uncomfortable I'm going to have a glass of wine to soften the discomfort and help me to to deal with you know whatever it is I have to deal with and so the pattern of behavior continues and you know our brains like to conserve energy so therefore where we, we create a habit which is subconscious and so every time we feel uncomfortable in a situation we now are reaching for that glass or two of wine and it becomes now a process a part an ingrained part of our habits and our lives and then we look back and we think the last however long we're drinking too much it's affecting our behavior 
it's also affecting our clarity of thought and it's impacting our health. Now we've got, we're putting on weight. Um, we have these cravings that we're dealing with. And, you know, there are other things that are going on that we don't, we don't feel good about. Now we have the feeling of we don't feel good about the decisions we're making and it impacts the anxiety. So in, instead of making us feel better in the short term, you know, we, we feel more comfortable, but in the long term, we have now all these other uh, problems that we're now dealing with, right? So that's kind of, that's just one example of, you know, just drinking a little bit too much to help us to feel comfortable uh, impacts us. And there are, there are other things that people do to self-soothe that um, they, they later regret, right? And, you know, that could be, I don't know, um, uh, maybe smoking, right? It could be, you know, um, quick to anger, right? There are so many other issues that if you don't deal with the stress and the anxiety effectively, properly, um, healthily, then we're going to have those these these impacts that later on we're just going to regret and then it becomes a challenge to rewire those patterns it's it's not difficult it's just very difficult to do it on our own we need to then work with a professional to help us to create better patterns of behavior that then become new habits and 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 natural ways of dealing with our stress and our anxiety Thank you. They made me think, not only it's very expensive because yeah. drinking and smoking, sadly, yeah. pills and anxiety pills, it becomes, you know, a, a, t a toll on your life because you have yeah. to rely on something external because the internal resource is somehow missing. Don't we then build up this idea that we cannot deal with something unless we have this external help? So we... In the end, we feel more powerless. Absolutely. And and the issue with anxiety, um, and you, you'll probably agree with me, is the more powerless you feel, the bigger it becomes. And so, you know, it can start off with just a feeling of discomfort in a, in a situation. Like, as you say, you know, I'm... Uh, I'm a, um, a business person and, you know, I feel comfortable in my, my knowledge, my skills, myself but put me in front of a room full of people to present. And that's where it starts, right? And that's where I need the help, right? You can <laughs> all the, the internal overthinking and the anxiety. Now that could just be where the anxiety starts. But if you don't deal with it effectively, it will start to creep into other areas of your life, right? And that's where you start to feel completely powerless. Um, and and it will have very many layers of impact. No. Yeah. I did have clients in the past that were just like that. Basically, they started to do one part of their life, one segment of their life, one area, one field, maybe the school or work, and then it was literally like throwing a bottle of oil on the floor. It went and it just spread everywhere because actually the more you listen to the anxiety and take action, in that in that way for example a drug or a drink or something the more you avoid the, the problem as well and avoid the situation the more your brain will think oh this is a big problem here you know we are we are going to use this and that so this is serious and so the more you think it's serious the more reaction you will have and it's really ingrained which is why it's important to go to a therapist people think oh i'm spending you know fifty dollars a hundred dollars a per session, yeah, do you know how much you're spending if you don't deal with that? Because, you know, the alcohol and the drugs will have an impact. If you lose your liver in extreme cases, that's life-threatening, isn't it? But on the on the average, when you invest in yourself, you're going to just get something good out of it because you're now in control. Your quality of life has no no price of it. It's just, it just priceless, isn't it? Right, right. And, and it's interesting you talk about cost. Uh, because that can be a triggering word for for people, especially you know the the beginning of the conversation. I always um, have a complimentary uh, uh, fifteen minute 
chat. I offer that for for people who have got a couple of questions. You know, they want they they're not sure with you know the the type of work that I do is going to be a good fit. So I start off saying that let's just have a, a couple of minutes just to you know I can ask you a couple of questions. You can ask me a couple of questions if we think it's a good fit. Then you know I'll offer them a longer conversation uh, to detail exactly what it is that they they're dealing with and what my recommendations would be and then obviously if they want to move ahead then you know there there is going to be a cost to working um and you know sometimes people are a little bit you know uh, concerned about talking about that but and, and i try and kind of help them by saying well what's the cost of doing nothing not just financially but to your health to your relationships to your career uh to you know long term you know, have you thought about that? And it and it isn't necessarily, uh, you know, financial. It's everything else. It's your life. Yes. You know, yes. it it's the potential that you're missing yeah. out on, of how life yeah. could be. And it's not that difficult once you work with a specialist. So, what kind of tools do you use? Because I know you use psychotherapy, NLP, and EFT. So, in a in a series of sessions, what what would you do to help a person with so, this? Um, yeah. So my. Yeah, so so here in Florida, uh, so I did all my training back in London uh, before we before we moved here, and so yes, I have my psychotherapy training, but I'm not able to use that here in Florida because I didn't train here and get my uh, certifications and qualifications here. So um, I utilize my hypnotherapy uh, qualification and here I'm known as a certified consulting hypnotist, (laughs) because you can't use even the word hypnotherapist here in Florida unless you've done the certifications here. And let me tell you, the certifications here are, are not as good as what you would get back home. But that's another story. So here it's hypnosis. It's neuro-linguistic programming, EFT, emotional freedom technique. And then I kind of spatter along some of, I can't help myself, but obviously, you know, sprinkle the magic of, you know, other therapies that I've been trained in along the way. And I always say to my clients, because everybody's so different. So because my training is so extensive and my years of experience, I have the ability to kind of create a... Um, and cherry pick from all of my knowledge and experience sessions that are specifically designed for them, their personality, their uh, you know their life experience and the problems that they're dealing with. So I might have be dealing with you know ten people with very similar problems, but yet the sessions will look very different because they are different mm-hmm. people. So no two sessions are ever the same. But I you know I always like to teach my clients emotional freedom technique um, because I think that it's a very very effective empowering tool um, that can be utilized for many different issues and it's something they can do themselves right and that's why it's so empowering anything you can teach your clients to do themselves in the moment is for me is is very important and then we do Um, use hypnosis in our sessions as well because that's where the deep change in perception happens which is so important when dealing with anxiety it's how you look at it and as you said before the more attention you place on it the bigger it gets and people tend to focus so much on uh, uh, what is going wrong and what what is what they they're not happy about in their life and they forget about where it is they want to be and what it is they want to feel hmm. instead, right? And I think if people focus more on this and learn how to do that, because it doesn't come naturally in our brains. Our brains are always drawn to the negative, right? So to learn how to uh, shine the light on what it is they want instead and make that big, yes, things start changing very fast. Yes, I can see that's NLP and... I did train with um, Marisa Pia, but also with Mike Mandel. And we do so much oh. Mandel about visualizing and, and the metaphors. And sometimes her mind doesn't need to be told anything specific. We just need a metaphor that describes our life. Yeah. And what happens is when we sometimes read the story, you know, let's pick up a Cinderella story, but whatever story is, so there's a meaning to that. You know, a lady who does this X, Y, Z will end up doing that. Ah, that's eye-opening. Maybe that's me. So when we're talking metaphors, 
we just think, I just have a little chat. I mean, if you remember Milton Erickson, the great psychotherapist, and of course I'm an Ericksonian hypnotist myself. So he had this thing of just talking to people and after a while they, they were done. They had no idea what happened. And one of his clients said, I don't know, I've been smoking all my life. I went there, he told me two stories and a couple of jokes. I went home and I no longer want to smoke. I don't know what he's done to me. He used metaphors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so powerful because the subconscious, it's the language of the subconscious yeah. metaphor. So the power of words is incredible. And you know what? In my experience of 100 plus clients, it's the words that we tell ourselves that are the most important because we are the most self-bashing individuals in the world. We destroy everything. <laughs> I know, I know. And and uh, the other thing is that, you know, when, when you, the mind doesn't know um how to process negation properly so you can say the wrong words to yourself and get the opposite result you know um i'm not going to freak out right all it hears is i'm going to freak out and so now we're focusing on freaking out and the freak out gets bigger and bigger and bigger right and i think it's uh, again empowering our clients to understand how the mind works how it processes and teaching them, you know, just a few nuances so that they can uh, tweak what they're doing so that it can be more effective in their life. Once they start doing this stuff, making these little tweaks, it feels natural, but it feels so good. Then they get the confidence back and it's like, what more can I do now? Right? Very often when we first start with our clients, you'll probably agree, they come in, they're overwhelmed they just need they don't know what to do they've been maybe to traditional talk therapy spent a ton of money and time and it hasn't worked it feels good to talk about our problems everybody knows that yeah right it's great yeah. but it doesn't get us out of the of, of the depths of it. where the, you know what what they're doing that you know whether it's the depression the anxiety or you know the fear or whatever it is they're in it and sometimes it does keep us stuck and what we do is we give them the tools and the know-how and the power to be able to, you know, lift them out. And now here they are shining, feeling amazing and living a wonderful life. And that's why I often get asked, you know, 15 years is a long time to be doing the same thing. And, you know, I, I'm just like, what? It's it, I just love it because I see these transformations happen in front of me over and over again. That's my addiction, baby. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. And I think that that's that's we can really sum it all up and, and give tips based on that because it is not as complicated in the majority of times unless you have a medical condition. Well, we're not talking about that now, but right. most of the times it's just correcting the way we are looking at something right. through these black glasses and focus on what is important. Because if I have a camera and I have a long lens in front of me, I could almost pick it up, but it's too far. And I just move the rings yes. to focus on one thing, all the rest becomes blurred. Correct. It just disappears. The camera is designed to copy what the lens do in the, in the eye. So this lens will focus on something, it focuses you, you now, I cannot see anything behind it, just all blurred. And isn't that exactly the same? Because our brain cannot focus on everything. We are not multitasking. This is really medically proven. We're not multitasking. We can focus on something for a little while and something for a little while, six seconds. And that's why driving while texting is so dangerous and doing fires or anything explosive while doing something else is very dangerous because we cannot focus on both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So just like an actor comes into the stage and takes precedence and talks and everybody, everyone stops talking because the actor is talking. So we listen to that. When we put a thought in our minds, my experience is that's what we're going to listen to. Mm -hmm. But if we push away the actor and say, well, I'm not listening to that old story. I want that one because I'm the director of the show and I bring somebody else. The story starts to change our biology changes, our emotion changes, our breathing changes, even the temperature of our skin changes and the way we breathe deeply or not changes because we're saying to the brain, no, but I'm focused on something else. Yeah. And that's completely different. Just like when you're running and you have 
this race, you have 10 people. If you are concentrated on how big and strong is the other runner, you're going to lose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But if you concentrate on the end, what you're going to, that's my thing and I'm going to get there in 10 seconds or whatever. I'm one of these snails, so I can't even imagine what it's like <laughs> to fly towards the goal. But let's say when you focus on that, you're concentrated, your, your heart is pumping your, and your energy is there, your focus is there. You're gonna get there as fast as you can possibly could because you are focused on what matters, right. and that's what's missing in anxiety. You're focused on what can possibly go wrong, exactly. <laughs> and so of course, that's right. what you're gonna get. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. and you know um, that that reminds me of an analogy that I give to my clients to help them to understand how to manage their thoughts because so many people say to me, "Is my mind is driving me crazy? I can't stop." this you know negative uh cycle of uh thought it just keeps coming and i can't shut it up and I can't. so one of the first I, i do a couple of things with with my clients uh, right in the first session to help them understand how they can you know really stop it um and the first thing i say is all right i want you to understand that you are not your thoughts you are the thinker of your thoughts Think, everyone, think. <laughs> right? So you are the thinker of your thoughts. You are not your thoughts. And every time one of these thoughts start, because you, it only starts with one, one negative thought, and you allow yourself just to be at the mercy of that thought, then all of a sudden tens of thousands of thoughts just come flooding in. So if you remind yourself that you're, you are the thinker, you are not the thoughts, That helps them to minimize what mm. the, the the sound of the thoughts almost. It's it's like, oh, and they, and they feel elevated from it, right? And the other thing um, about these thoughts is, okay, now I've recognized that I am the thinker. Now what can I do if I decide I want to think another thought? I don't want to, I don't want to be thinking this thought. I want to be thinking something else. And if they haven't, they haven't recognized that yet. That is they're so powerful. Oh, I have a choice in the moment. Wow. It's the power of choice, yeah. I didn't realize. And then it's a power, it's so powerful. So now what we do is we create maybe two or three power thoughts that we have in our back pocket. That when we because if we have a predetermined decision that this is what we're going to do in the moment, I'm going to think one of my power thoughts. Then I have to think about it because in the moment, if they haven't had uh, a decision that, well, these are my two power thoughts, right? Which is easy just to pull one or two out and really focus on those, which are going to be, you know, uplifting and, and wonderful and positive and, you know, whatever. You know, it, it, it really takes the pressure off them. So, you know, it's a pattern of like, recognize it's happening, remind yourself you are the thinker of the thoughts, you are not your thoughts, and know that you have a choice of what you can think about. Pull out one of the two thoughts you want to think about, think about that, there you have it. All of a sudden, those negative thought loops just disappear and they didn't even realize it. It can be just as simple as that. Yes. It's so powerful, but yet so powerful. simple, so simple. Yeah, oh. they should teach this in schools because we sometimes build up such a negative thing about, you know, homework and exams and failing and whatever, testing. And in the end of the day, once we recognize the power of relaxation, breathing nicely and putting some gratitude and positivity in the thoughts. And I do recognize that there are times when you have cancer, mental illness, desperation, financial, that, that there are right. real reasons for being worried. <laughs> there are true reasons, you know, bombs are falling, away. there are wars all over the place. So yes, that's when you get worried. Even so, mm -hmm. you have to learn how to self-regulate these thoughts, these emotions, because they, they can destroy mm -hmm. you. And as we know, cortisol goes high, your immune system goes Sick. down. So you're more likely to right. become right. Which more in, uh, uh, you know, these days, Everybody's talking about, you know, uh, health and keeping healthy and what we can do to keep healthy. And people are waking up to understanding how, you know, stress impacts our health. 
And really at the end of the day, you know, the, the missing link is, well, what can I do with my own mind to help me to stave off that uh, stress response more effectively? Yes. And sometimes it's just about diving into the events that we dread because most of the times, mm. unless the event is jumping into a fountain area, uh, a puddle full of crocodiles, the majority of times it's not as bad as we anticipated. And once we are in, we realize, oh, actually, I actually almost enjoyed myself. Yeah. Because, you know, we, we have to realize our brain doesn't have anything called a sense of humor. We just don't have that naturally. So if we have a subconscious thought that something is going to go wrong, we will build an imagery that is very powerful and dark and uh, negatively charged to make us feel in our body the breathing and the sinking feeling. And some of my clients literally had the feeling of having a stone or something gray yeah. and dark that was right here in, in the stomach. Those on YouTube can see me and the other can't. Sorry for that. But um, they feel that, and during the session, we let it yeah. go to the universe or whatever, they don't, because that is the condensation of all these ideas that we are creating electrically. They can be felt by the brain as a real thing, just like when we watch a horror movie or we see something really gruesome on television. It's all pixels, but they create a physical somatic reaction. Well, that I mean, right? that's an example of hypnosis right there. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. And we believe it. I mean <laughs> We do. We do. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's not just about being naive and positive thinking. We're not hippies here. We're yeah. talking about how our, our biology works. Right. And the energy will always go where your focus is. So if you keep focusing on what's gonna go wrong, that's what you're gonna see. And we can talk to you all day. <laughs> so that's why I think hypnosis is so powerful because it will allow you to just forget the logic for a minute and just go down to what you actually believe. And a lot of times there was something that happened years ago and they gave us this belief and we attached to that very nicely because we had to protect ourselves mm. from pain. Mm. And, and so when, as we detangle it with the help of somebody who knows what we're doing, we get this freedom. And I think is that our thoughts are not who we are and we, can detach ourselves from a little baby who was worried about something and now has created a very difficult life in the huge effort to protect himself from more pain. But actually life can be very, very interesting, even from a pain, but such great lessons and things we can learn. I know. Do you agree with that? Uh, I, of course I do. And it's so fascinating. I'm still learning every day you know uh and and i find it fascinating and um i'm i'm encouraged that people are be, are these days more open to understanding their own minds and why it's working the way it's working and what they can do to help themselves yes. more more effectively and deeper and quicker than they first yes. thought right yes um, yes. And they don't know what they, you know, people don't know what they don't know as well. That's a thing. Right. <laughs> and it's, you know, I think once the, they have that kind of spark, that realization that really I can live my life limitless and it doesn't have to be hard to, to do that. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Many things can change and our happiness is not determined by the environment as much as we think. There is so much we can do for the inner happiness based on this attitude, like if you follow the dispense and all the other people, you know, just mm. we decided to think, what can I do in this situation? Be strategic, which is why I always follow my normal sessions by coaching. Mm. Uh, because when you have a coaching menu, you open up your brain to all the possibilities and things that you thought you could never do, you can do. So I am so grateful that we could have this chat with you because I think, guys, if you want to talk to Shana Rosenthal, you can just click on all those links and I give you. But I hope you have today enough tips to get started to really think, am I in charge of my own health? Yes. And what can I do today? And today, the first thing is recognize you are not your thoughts. That's going to be the, uh, <laughs> the top of my meme that I make yeah. for every episode. So oh. you'll see, you are not your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Says, Say Shana. <laughs> <laughs> you are Follow me for more advice. <laughs>
Yeah, I am the thinker of my thoughts. I am not my thoughts. Yes, I am the thinker. Yeah, and that's so important. So this, with this um, final message of good hope, please contact us for any questions. As as I said and you said, it's free to have a consultation. So you can ask questions, and we can always refer you if we think there's a special thing for you. They last with a colleague, so we're not jealous of one another. We just oh, no. very full of energy, and we exchange, and and you know we we think it's great that the client goes to the right person. Right. So. Thank you for being with us. Oh, you you are more than welcome. Thank you for thank you for this opportunity. This has been wonderful. What a pleasure. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure for me. So anyone who's listened to this, if you want to maybe share it with one of your friends who feel a little bit down and oh why everything is going wrong, share, click share, like, subscribe. You, you know what to do. And um, so that you know, if you do that, it really helps the channel to get seen by more people who need to change something so they can create the life that they want and that is exactly the title of my podcast for a reason because we have tools to create this life let's do that together thank you so much and see you all later bye bye you've listened to create with france sydney